Thank you all for joining Arctic IT today for the Get on the Casino Floor with Mobile Player Management webinar. We are excited to have Brian Schmidt, Pre-Sales Solution Architect, presenting for us today. So with that, let us welcome Brian. Good afternoon. I would like to uh, welcome everyone to the webinar and uh, got a really exciting content for everyone to share on this beautiful summer day. A little bit about myself. My name again is Brian Schmidt. I've been with Arctic IT just uh, coming up on six years now. I've been working in the Microsoft space you know, for over 20 years uh, on different in different capacities, actually with Microsoft for a period of time. So I've been very engaged with Dynamics CRM and Dynamics 365 since the inception uh, of the product. So uh, this is a natural progression of showing how we can bring this mobile capability within Dynamics 365 to you. So before we get into that, uh, what I want to do is spend just a moment in, and give you a brief introduction to Arctic IT. Uh, we are an experienced solution provider on Dynamics 365. We've been doing this for uh, over 16 years and with many different tribal governments, tribal casinos, federal government, as well as state and local government organizations. So we, we've been doing this for a long time. We've got a lot of experience in doing these kinds of uh, solutions for uh, many different clients in our space. Our parent company is Doyle Unlimited. They're based out of Fairbanks, Alaska. Our president, Aaron Schutt, and, and our COO, Julie Mormon, are guiding leaders from the Doyon organization. Arctic IT has been a Microsoft partner for well over 15 years. You can see all the different competencies that our team maintains between application development, cloud deployment, data platform, enterprise uh, resource planning, across many different competency areas with many of our staff so that we are have to be regularly tested and certified to make sure that we maintain that gold partnership status. And as a data point, only 1% of all the partners that work with Microsoft are actually gold partners. So that puts us in a very elite group to maintain this gold partnership status. A little bit about the experience, we've done these kinds of solutions many times. So we've got competencies across Dynamics 365, Office 365, Azure, and, and we've deployed cloud solutions, uh, government solutions, commercial and tribal clients, as mentioned before. A little bit about some of the clientele that, that we have worked with. Uh, Sikron Casino, just outside of San Diego, is one of our clients that has, is using Player 365. They've actually been using this very well and, and guided some of the feature enhancements that has helped their team, as well as our, our ability to learn more about how hosts and, and player development staff work within the casino. Uh, some other casinos that we work with are Snoqualmie Casino in, in Washington and Wind River Casino in California. So what I want to spend some time today uh, is introducing you to this idea concept of a mobile player management and a solution that we have released that sits on top of Dynamics 365 to enable your executive hosts and hosts and player development staff to be able to take their information out on the floor and use it in a, in a mobile manner when they're working with their staff or with, with their, your guests. Uh, so the, the idea here is that this is a what we call a solution accelerator that sits on top of the Dynamics 365 platform that enables multiple channel CRM. So for example, uh, you can use SMS text, you can support email, you can support uh, many different ways of communicating with your customers in this mm -hmm. relationship system. You can use it for player engagement. So it's an, a way for your host to look up the player data, uh, learn more about the individual and connect with them when they're on the floor out, out in your casino. We'll see more about that in a moment. And then for host management, this is a way to extend the gaming system to allow your host to assign those VIP players to the, the hosts uh, and make sure that, that, that the hosts are, are engaging with your VIP clients, as well as making sure that if a staff moves on or they're on vacation, that all your core, your key customers are being taken care of. It also provides some customer service capability. Uh, we'll, we'll touch on this briefly today, but there's a way to, to use the solutions as a centralized mechanism to share information across many different teams across your casino if you have that customer service uh, function within your organization. And then, of course, some marketing automation. This is a, a key way for you to be using a, a true CRM solution 
to engage automatically when maybe a, a player gets promoted you can fire off an sms text or a or an email to that individual based on their preferences to make sure that you communicate that uh, that status change to them and and be able to engage them either through invitations or uh, just regular notifications and then, of course, social media engage integration is, is built into the Dynamics 365 platform to allow you to view and respond to social media posts. And we'll, we'll, we'll uh, see a little bit of that. All right. And then the key element here is that this solution is accessible anytime because it's a 24 by 7. Your operation is a 24 by 7 uh, gaming facility. So we want to make sure that the device that is used, used by your staff has always access to the data that they need to perform their job. So that's that's where we uh, make this available on any device, anytime. A little bit more about the Solution Accelerator. We have, The idea here is that using a CRM allows you to aggregate all the data around your player to get this full 360 view of all the activity, not only the gaming activity, but maybe the non-gaming activity as well. We'll see this in the demo where you can integrate data from your lodging or your food and beverage or your other uh, retail outlets to be able to see what is the total spend by a guest uh, to see all the different uh, elements, not only the gaming spend, but all the non-gaming spend to see the true value of this individual uh, to the casino. So that's a, an important element and a design goal for this solution accelerator is to make sure that it gives it collects all this data and puts it at the fingertips of your hosts so that they can have that accessible to them all right so before we step into uh, the demo uh, i'll take a moment and pause if there are any questions do you want to go ahead and do that poll sure okay yep. let's yep. do no, that time to do the poll. sure okay maybe that'll help um everyone think of some questions yep. So what is the most common method of interacting with your guests today? Okay, and it looks like the answer that was, what is the most common method of interacting with your guests today is on the casino floor. And a few people said email communication. Okay, all right. Well, that's good news. So, I mean, that's, that's the best case scenario is you want to have that face-to-face -face connection. And the idea with this mobile solution is to enable those player development or hosts to be able to have more information uh, at their fingertips when they're out on the floor engaging with their players. So uh, let, with that, let's step into uh, the uh, demo uh, and I'll introduce you to uh, the new uh, Dynamics 365 Player 365 solution. Uh, as you can see, I'm actually running inside a browser, so there's no desktop installation of any software. I happen to be running in a Chrome browser. This solution is, is hosted within any of the modern browsers, including Safari on an Apple device, on an Android device, uh, but also you know on a tablet, multiple different tablet layouts. Uh, the one big benefit of the Dynamics 365 system is that it, it, it has what they call now a unified interface. Uh, so this design pattern for this layout uh, actually adjusts dynamically to the, the device that you're using. And the look and the navigation and everything is, is nearly identical. So in the past, you had to actually do two, you know, have two different presentations uh, for your application and you had to, to build your logic and everything twice. Uh, not so anymore with the new Dynamics 365 system. You can do that all in one, uh, one layout and expose all that key information to your staff. So the, the first thing I want to introduce you to is this notion of uh, the, we've got a mobile app and, and what I'm simulating, I'm running it right now on a, on a Surface device. So I'm simulating a tablet. Uh, so this could be a scenario where your hosts are, are walking around the floor with a tablet and this is the view that they would see. They would actually see the, the executive dashboard with their navigation over here. Uh, they can click on the home. They can click on recent records that they've, that they've accessed. Uh, they can see if there are certain players or certain records that have been pinned they want to come back to frequently. They can use this as a mechanism for that. But then this is the dashboard that allows them to, to, be, and to be, see the, the information that's most important to them uh, when they log in and maybe can be uh, a, a list of action items. So for example, this view, 
uh, here, you can see that this is a list of my players on the floor. So what we do with Dynamics 365 is we integrate this to your back office uh, gaming system uh, so that you can use it as a own near real time mechanism to see when that player is at, at a, a table or a slot machine and they do a card in with that loyalty card, uh, uh, then what it does is it triggers that uh, information to the gaming system and then we replicate that to Dynamics 365 to note that, hey, there are right now for me, uh, for my players, there are six of them on the floor and they have this rank. And by the way, I want to drill in to be able to see more information about this. Um, so I can actually click to, to view the records. And now I see that I can click on this uh, and it actually filters the results. So it shows me all those players uh, that are actually on the floor right now. Uh, so again, it, it's using it by a current uh, last update. So it shows me all this current information and then where they're currently located out on the floor. So it's a it's an interactive way to uh, allow your host to see this information in real time uh, when they're out there working. Uh, you will talk about this a little bit more later, but the player touch, uh, you could have some casinos have a, a program where they want to make sure that hosts are interacting with all their assigned players at least once a month or at least every other month or something like that. Uh, you can define the period of, of how you want that to be, uh, and you can use this as a mechanism to say, hey, if any of them are overdue, I want to be able to take action with this list. And, and again, each of these panes, uh, the filters and the views and the charts are very configurable uh, to allow you to see just the information that matters the most to either use an executive host or uh, as a host. So this, this is a different view. Uh, that allows me to see now I'm one of the player hosts and I'm seeing my players that are actually on the floor. And I can see, you know, I can sort my players by theoretical win. <clears throat> I can uh, see my players that haven't been on the floor gaming for a while. So here's one of my diamond players. I might want to drill into that player a bit more and say, hey, you know, send them a personalized invitation. Uh, and, and that's something that can be easily done uh, from within the system. Any questions so far? Thank you, Brian. We do have a question. Um, so I'll read that aloud. Is there a way to filter on all the players that have been playing a particular game most often? So actually, that, that's a good segue. So let's dive into that. Let's take a look. At, 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 there's a couple different views. So I use the contacts, and we could rename this. We call it contacts. It could be players. It could be guests. Whatever terminology we, you use inside your casino, we can change these labels very easily so that it's using the, the terms that your staff use. So for example, uh, right now in the system, I've only got 135 players loaded, uh, but I could use this uh, as a way to filter. Uh, like for example, let me show, show me all the barred players. This could be used by your security staff. Uh, th those that are inactive, I wanna see all those players that haven't had any activity in a certain number of days. Uh, so you can use that as a mechanism. So there's there's multiple different ways uh, to filter information. Uh, so for example, this might be if you only host players at a certain tier and above, you can create these views. And in traditional systems, these were actual reports, right? So you would actually generate a, a hard-coded report and then you'd have to go and navigate to a different area and then click run report and then you'd see the list and, and then you could take action with it. The idea with the, the, the views and Dynamics 365, we don't create those reports in the same way. A lot of it is just dynamic information. I pick the view that I wanna see, and as soon as I click that, I can literally click refresh, and that information is up to date with the current, current data. For example, let's go back and, and uh, let's look at uh, all players. And the question again, they wanted to see by player preference, right? Yes, that's right. Yep, based on that game. Mm -hmm. So there's a couple different ways that we could do that. We could either create a view like this to say, show me all the players that have a preference of slot or poker or anything like that. But this, so there, there would be a view like that. Another way, and I'll, I'll dive into this uh, a little bit deeper, there's the customer preferences. So this this is a way 
for the host to actually create the information and relate it to the individual showing uh, their preferences. So they, they like uh, slot tournaments or they like poker tournaments or uh, they, they prefer rock concerts, you know, they, this type of concert or they, you know, in the hotel, they prefer this king room. So there's multiple different ways to define those customer preferences and be able to filter on that from this advanced. Let me see if I can get that advanced find window to, to pop open here. Okay, so this is the new, and what I could do is I could relate that, and you can see all the different information that I can filter on and sort by. Uh, so I can look, uh, let's see, I'm looking for customer preferences, and, and I can say preference contains slot, and I can click those results, and it shows me the list and granted this is some made up data but this shows you the, the ability to filter and search on on that uh, that data very very easily and let's say for example i want to uh, which of those players prefers poker uh, i can click on that and it comes back at the results so this is you can see how easily i can mine the information and i could then say from here all right this is a, a view that you can actually create. So it isn't something that we would need to go create for you. You can actually go create this preference and then say, I wanna save this as, um, and I'm gonna give it a new name, customer prefer poker. And now that I save that, I'm gonna save that view, okay? So now when I come back to all my contacts, and again, this, I'm pointing out that this feature is now available to you. Uh, now that shows up in my views. So this is a way to, to filter on information within the system and very quickly create uh, your own custom filter that maybe didn't come out of the box. Uh, and now you can use this information as a live real-time view. And if you like this view, you can actually share this with your team uh, and, and allow others on your team to be able to use this view. All right, did that answer your question or is there any follow-up question? Thank you, Brian. Um, I don't see a follow-up question to that one, but I do see that uh, there's another question. Can sure. you please show the mobile version along with the desktop version? So what I'm showing you right now is really the mobile version. I mean, it literally looks the same on, on my Surface device as it does on a mobile phone. All it does is it just reorients the page or the browser so it might be, you know, it might be narrower, right, like this. And, and you ha might have to do some different scrolling. Uh, but in reality, uh, the, the page that you're seeing right now is the exact same layout, function, navigation, and everything uh, in the way that it looks on the mobile device. So, you, for example, this, this, you can collapse this navigation on the left side so you see more uh, over here or you can expand that and you can do this on the on the phone as well on the tablet or the laptop. So yes, it, that's why they call it a, a unified interface uh, because it, it is used the same interface, the same navigation mechanism across all the different devices that, that are supported by this. Good question. All right, so now let's, uh, for example, let's dive into one of the players uh, so we can look at the information now typically in this scenario is the information about your players is, is sourced from your gaming system. So we use that uh, as a way to say, if they don't have a loyalty card or they're not known to your gaming system, uh, there's really no way to, for us to uh, add them to the CRM system. You can, you know, with outreach using either mail or phone marketing or some other SMS text marketing, you could bring those automated uh, responses back in and create contact information about the individual, but that's some marketing automation uh, that we can work with you to set up those scenarios uh, to try and engage and bring in new customers into the loyalty system in the, in the gaming system. So you'll see, for example, uh, that some of these fields have this lock key. That means that the field is actually locked uh, and it means it's read only. Uh, so there could be business processes that you would say, all right, I allow the phone or, or contact information to be updated 
on here. And if your gaming system allows it, we could push that contact information back into the gaming system. But in many cases, when we deployed this, uh, this information here is read only. And the, the player is responsible to update that either through uh, a portal or a kiosk or some other mechanism. Okay, so uh, in this example, what we're doing is we're showing information that we're getting from the, the gaming system. So it might be uh, the, the location. This They're on the floor right now, and they're at this uh, section and bank, and they're at this machine number, and they were at the machine starting at this time. Uh, and again, this came right from the gaming system, and then I can literally be looking up, and that's the scenario with the the host is... I got a saw notification that Abraham is on the floor and now I'm walking over to where Abraham is. And while I'm doing that, I'm looking up, okay, his tier hasn't really changed. Nothing's changed here. The last time I talked to him was maybe a month ago. Uh, you know, you can look at that last player touch and I might want to schedule a next player touch uh, that I want to be able to say, I'm having that conversation with him. I can see my theoretical win data. And again, this is coming right from the gaming system. How many comp points and so forth are available to him. And then you can integrate to pull up the offers. So if your offers or, or vouchers or anything that's available to this player are visible uh, in the gaming system, we can bring that information into CRM. And this could be a case where uh, your host can then look at these offers and say, wait a minute, oh, he has an expired offer and now we can have that conversation with the guest to say, hey, is this a, you know, did you just not use this? Do you not like this? Uh, is there something else that we can offer that would be of more value to you? That kind of thing. So this can be an opportunity for the host to have a conversation about which offers or vouchers are, are they're eligible for, and then assigning those uh, to the player to may help them take advantage of what they're eligible uh, to receive. Okay dive in a little bit more i'll show some of the details about the individual uh, you can collect information about their personal data so that you can have that personal conversation with the individual mm -hmm. so you can see whether their marital status is uh, update their spouse information maybe their birth date or anniversary the number of children and the idea here is to put this personalized information in the hands of the host so that the, when they're walking over uh, and having a conversation with that player they can see, hey, they've got a birthday coming up and they can ask them about it. What are your plans for your birthday? And, and have a, a, a more personalized conversation, which is, which is really important and makes that person feel more of a VIP. And that's the idea is to make them feel more welcome uh, and, and make them want to return, come back. Uh, this would be another opportunity if you use a service case, the service module area, uh, to be able to see all the service cases. So if there were complaints, uh, he complained, of, I could see that he complained about a room uh, the last time he was here. And I wanna be able to ask him about that. Hey, I'm sorry you had a, a problem with your room. You know, what can I do to make it right for you? What can I, how can I help you, right? So there's information about that. Now, the other element is this flexible note. So the timeline, the timeline here shows a, a chronological, reverse chronological, uh, activity board that shows all the different activities related to this individual. So I can just create a note here. Abraham uh, is turning, you know, maybe maybe we, we want a note uh, that he's turning 60 or uh, send a special uh, gift. Now, when I add this note and I can e even attach something to this, when I add this note, it's adding it to Abraham's record. And now anybody, uh, any other host, maybe Abraham gets reassigned to another host. Any other uh, host can then see this note and then take action with it. Or alternatively, you can use this as a way to create a task. I can create a task that says, hey, I want to send a gift basket, right? I wanna send him a gift basket. And I wanna send it before the end of September. So I'm gonna send it here and I can pick a time if that makes sense. Uh, and I can assign that uh, as an owner or, and it's, it shows that it's regarding Abraham. Uh, and I can assign that to somebody else if I want to, to make sure that, that, that a gift back, basket gets sent. So now that can show up uh, on an Outlook. Uh, so if you use Outlook on your mobile devices, that activity 
uh, will then show up as an activity on their Outlook as a reminder. It also shows up out here as an activity so that they can, the, the hosts or the appropriate people that would take action with this task will see that and make sure it's being handled in the appropriate uh, completion date. Another element of this is the player touch. So there's a couple different ways uh, to add a player touch. So what we've done is we created a notion of a player touch in this environment is saying, I went out, I had a conversation with him. Uh, he is happy with his offers. So I'll just use that as, a, as an example. Uh, I'll save that and mark it as complete. And what, what happens is, is that's flagging the individual or flagging their recorders as now that I've done this player touch, I want to send a reminder or, or use it as a way to make sure that I, on a monthly basis, I'm reaching out and making contact with all my key players to make sure that they're feeling, feeling engaged. I can also uh, use this as a way to open the filter and then see, see all the different, use this as a way to see all the different activities. So over the time that I've been working with him, I've got 37 closed activities, but I can also use this to see overdue or active activities. So this is a way for you to be able to, to collect information and show uh, for those important players, all the different communications. And, and this becomes actually a really valuable area uh, to share information across the different host teams to, to see all the emails that were sent, all, all the activities, the player touches, air, all the communications that happen with him. Any questions? Yes, yeah, we have another question. Um, what if I want to restrict visibility of my note only to a supervisor? So there is a there is a uh, ability uh, within the security roles. I'm logged in right now as, mm -hmm. as an executive host, uh, so I'm seeing everything. But there is the ability to say, I can restrict those records to only my records, meaning those that are assigned to me or the notes or activities that I have created but otherwise I couldn't see the notes that were uh, created by others. So there is the ability to assign that, uh, that security rights by the role. So for example, you might have a role that you want uh, the supervisor to see all the notes and then a uh, customer service role uh, that they would say, no, we don't want them to see those notes. Uh, we can, they, they can only see the notes that they create. Uh, there is that ability to, to do that filtering through the security permissions. Good question. All right now, let's talk a little bit about the non-gaming. So we've got uh, now with this, you can see uh, the integration where we're pulling in all the different transactions. So we can see maybe their past history of all their hotel stays, how much they spent. We can summarize this information on this page to show their total spend, uh, either on food and beverage, retail, by different categories and you know, and being able to see the dates and when that happened and the source transaction. So we get this information mm -hmm. from an integration to something such as a, a data warehouse or a direct integration to those uh, transaction systems, such as your uh, lodging management system or your food and beverage uh, retail system. So we can collect this information. And again, they can have access to this data in real time on their mobile device. Customer reservations, we can have the ability in here to either integrate to an existing reservation system, such as Ticketmaster, if you're using that uh, to manage your reservations, or you can create your own reservation system or provide your own registration system through the Dynamics 365 solution that we have here. Uh, we can use that as a, as a way to send out the invitation and manage those uh, reservations uh, as the requests come back in for the number of tickets uh, for certain, certain types of events. You have multiple options there on how you collect that reservation information. And now what I'll do is get into some of the gaming detail. So this is, again is a valuable information for the host to be able to see all the gaming details for this individual. And, and the way we configured this is that, you know, if they're frequent gamers, we're seeing all the data on a daily basis, the game type, their theoretical win, how much they actually gambled, their cash in, their cash out, and then the game uh, type again. So we could see all this information on a daily basis 
and then we've configured this to to automatically purge the record after a certain number of days we picked 90 days just to manage the the value or the amount of daily statistics that are available in the systems but if you want to dive in even deeper you can also summarize the information by monthly so you can see okay for the month of december or november you can see their total gaming uh, for these games and how much their theoretical win is and there again you can the host can see this information uh, to gauge the value of this player. And then again, like we mentioned before, we can just collect or update or add. You can allow hosts to, to add customer preferences here when they're on the floor. They can add this. I'm just going to say uh, slot pref. And we can, we can then select what type of uh, preference it is. We'll say it's a gaming. And I'm going to add a slot preference. And you can have a notion of an expiration date on this if you want to. If not, you can just leave it and just save and close. And it's literally that easy for your host to be able to add uh, some of the preferences that, that uh, you know, as they have a conversation with the individual, uh, they can update this information. Okay. Uh, let's move into uh, a different area. Let's talk a little bit just briefly about the, the service area. So this is... Uh, a different view so we can have a customer service manager and so for example you could enable your host to be able to create cases so as your host is having a conversation they could actually create this new case uh, and in this and I'm just pulling up an example that he's complaining about the, the hotel uh, or the hotel room that he got last time he was not happy with it didn't like you know there's an issue there was stains uh, so you know now what you want to be able to do is after logging this case, you can route this case to the appropriate team uh, to be able to resolve the situation. But now this could be from a call-in, so you might have a customer service a team that collects this information and then creates a case for resolution, and, and then the host can view that the case was closed, or the, the host mm -hmm. themselves can create this case and be able to tr track it in the system. So there's multiple different ways to, to manage these cases. And then there's the notion of queues uh, that allows, I don't have anything that I'm working on, uh, but let's, let's pick uh, something. So this would be an example of a first come first served issue. So there was a service case and you could prioritize these cases uh, by the time they were entered. So you make sure you're resolving oldest cases first. And then as people take an item, uh, so that I could when say pick, I grab this case, I'm assigning it to me, I'm going to go work on this case and go resolve it. Uh, and that's, that's the way your customer service or your hotel management people can work these cases, resolve them as they're moving through the day. So now let's uh, take a quick step into some of the marketing campaigns. So there's either from, if I'm looking at an individual uh, such as Abraham, I can either say, I want to add him to an existing marketing list or I can actually send him an email uh, and send it individually, or I can go to, uh, let's say for example, I wanna look at my marketing list. And let's say that I created a dynamic, what they call a dynamic list. And this dynamic list means that any players that are assigned to me, so I can click on members, uh, so over time, I can look at the filter and I can click on this manage members and you can see how this, uh, so the contacts that are there, they must be active and they're assigned to me. So that's the way it's updating this. And literally every time I open this marketing list, if somebody gets added to my or assigned to me today, tomorrow when I rerun my marketing list, that new person is going to show up on my list. That's the idea of using a, a dynamic list. Uh, the other, you can see here, that's a dynamic list. Another way is saying uh, a, a static list. So a static list by marking it as that type, the members are added individually. So you must actively uh, pick an individual. So uh, Abraham, and there he is, and I'm going to add Abraham to that list. 
uh, let's come back to my marketing list. With dynamic, so like it might be their name, uh, it might be it might be their name, it might be their tier. Uh, you know, hey, here's uh, so it, it can be more of a personalized email that gets sent uh, to the individual. So for example, let's let's go to uh, this. So this is a, an example of a quick campaign that I sent out before. Uh, and I did this as an invitation to all of my players. Uh, we had a you know backyard patio barbecue. I picked my dynamic members to, to attach to this list. It shows me some statistics around how many people were invited and if there were email addresses that failed, uh, they will show up here. Uh, and then it shows me the list of all the people that were invited. And then if I did so, exclude some members from that list, I can see it here. And then I can use this as a way of seeing all the responses. Uh, so it would be, if I got an email response and this would all be automated. So when that response has come back from those individuals saying, hey, I'm interested, uh, it would show up here and then you could automate that process to give them a, print them a ticket or a, a, a door pass or whatever it is. And then you can either reply to them with that door pass or print a, a, a ticket or something for them when they arrive. But this, all these processes can be automated through the campaign automation capability within the system. So as an example, I can come in here and show, let me see if that's over here. There's an example of one of those graphical emails that gets sent. So you can literally create these emails as a, as a what you see, what you get uh, email format. So you can create the invitation in here, put graphics on it, and then dynamically add information so that it's more personalized and see here's, here's all the players. So multiplanar players, were the ones that got invited to this, and then if there's additional information about this, about that invitation to that specific event. So I, I think that's pretty much, we, we've touched on a lot of the different areas, some of the marketing, uh, but there's some great uh, automation capabilities, either looking at social posts to be able to see, you know, if there's golf tournament social posts that happen, uh, we can collect that information but we also have integration for bulk text messages to be able to communicate directly to those individuals that prefer to get their communications uh, via text message. So uh, there's, some, there's some great capabilities here. So I know we're running out of time. Any, any final questions? I think we're good. If you wanna wait a moment and just see if we have some more questions that someone would like to type in. Okay. Oh, I do have another question. Um, you showed daily and monthly statistics. How about filter the data to show the last 10 trips? So, okay, so you wanna go back to uh, the contacts. And so there, I don't have that view directly. So what we could do is, for example, let's see, do I, uh, so if I go into, Abraham's record and I filter on monthly gaming and you wanted to uh, filter or so I can also actually take this data and kick it out to Excel uh, to do some to do some more detail on this but I could also run a report to to filter on this but let's say for example uh, what I want to do and she just said that trips might span multiple months also. Sure, sure. So, th th so there's a notion of, is, th is this a gaming? So what we could do is it create that view across either non-gaming or gaming activity to be able to say, okay, show me the unique trips where they, they came and they visited uh, and they maybe came in and just stayed at the hotel, but they didn't go game. So we could actually create that as a separate view to combine this information together and show all the transactions that happened in the last three months. I don't have that view in the system right now, uh, but the data is there and it's all related to the individual. So we could absolutely pull that data up. Good question. Anything else? I'm not Anything? seeing any other questions yet. Thank you, Brian. All right, so what I will do is I will switch 
back here. So with that, I just want to wrap it up and just point out that Dynamics 365 is, is one of those platforms that we have selected to deploy this Player 365 solution. And the reason for that is that there's been some great marketing research uh, on this platform that has demonstrated that the return on investment for you as an organization, when you're using a CRM system or a, uh, a mechanism to collect the data and use the master data in a way that it helps you manage your business more effectively, there's this notion of the return on investment of 1695 uh, for every dollar spent. So it's it's been a, a really great tool for us. And most of our customers that have used this have really realized some great productivity benefits and, and been able to drive additional revenue within their casino to say, okay, how can I improve my engagement, improve my customer satisfaction? Uh, so those have been important measures for each of the customers that have used our solution. So I wanted to wrap up with a reminder that we do have an upcoming uh, webinar on August 15th, which is talking about the, the Dynamics GP roadmap. And if you use Dynamic GP as your financial system, there are some options for upgrading to the next generation uh, ERP system. So that will be our next webinar that we'll be hosting on August 15th. So you can look forward to that. And uh, with that, I thank you for your time. Appreciate your attention and questions and uh, hope we have an opportunity to work with you to do a deeper dive on the Player 365 solution and how it could help you and your player development staff to improve their marketing and their player development and host engagement. So I hope you have a great day and thank you for attending.